I mean, and by this point, you guys understand the pattern, right? They're slowly picking up the pattern. So once you understand this, eventually you will know what to do with AR forward circles. So our AR3 model is YT. P1 yt minus 1, P2 yt minus 2, P3 yt minus 3, plus epsilon t. As always, we have epsilon t to be normal. Zero sigma squared, not just one. So, if we take the expectation of each of those, we will see that we we'll end up having epsilon t. So, if we will have constant mean, so this series is likely to be more or it is stationary. Once we verify that, which we did, what is the next step? What did we find next? What was we finding? Row values. We need the row values, but to get to the row values, we need to find gamma h, right? So I'm going to start with gamma h. Wait, if you wanted to do your walk, you could do like a three by two matrix, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I would go. So, so the covariance of yt comma yt plus h would equal to the covariance of yt comma p1 yt plus h minus 1 plus p2 yt plus h minus 2. P3 y t plus h minus 3 plus epsilon t. Yes? So which would be covariance y t comma p1 y t plus h minus 1 plus the covariance of y t comma v2 yt plus h minus 2 plus the covariance of y3 comma v3 yt plus h minus 3 the last term simply the covariance of yt comma epsilon t and what is that covariance zero, zero. that we can just ignore that So we will have V1 covariance of yt comma yt plus h minus 1. V2 covariance of yt comma yt plus h minus 2. V3 covariance of y3 comma yt plus h minus 3. Good. Now, unlike the LA model, I can't simply call this zero, right? Because this is an auto progressive model. So, whatever we have at time t should depend on previous times. Um, so, it should be that you can't call what zero. Huh? You can't call what zero. Please. We can't call it directly zero. Unlike an MA model, because we're correlating the series, and this is a auto progressive model. So that is our expression for gamma h. Now we can plug in h is equal to zero. We will get gamma zero, which is v1 covariance of y t, comma yt minus 1 plus v2 covariance of yt 
comma y t minus t. Beta three covariance of y three comma y t. Or y t. Yeah. Um, the last term is not going to be zero because um, there is an epsilon t in y t, right? Correct. So that epsilon t will correlate with that epsilon t. So the last term is actually not zero. It's just sigma squared. Covariance of epsilon t, uh, epsilon t. Good. So this would be gamma or V1 gamma minus one plus V2 gamma minus two, V3 gamma minus three plus sigma squared. Yes, gamma one is equal to gamma minus one because of symmetry. So we can write this as gamma naught equals V1 gamma one, V2 gamma two, V3 gamma three, plus sigma squared. If I divide by gamma naught on both sides, I'll have one equals P1. Gamma one over gamma naught is What is gamma one over gamma? It's the row, row one, right? So row one, likewise, gamma two of gamma naught would be row two, gamma three of gamma naught, row three plus sigma squared over gamma. Do you see a pattern? Go back to our AR2 model. And the variance that we found in the AR2 model, gamma naught. And do you see a pattern? It's the same up other than the, the chest that top got added, right? So if I rewrite this, I'll have one minus. P1 row 1 minus P2 row 2 minus P3 row 3 equals sigma squared over gamma naught. So we want to solve for gamma naught. So gamma naught would simply be equal to sigma squared over 1 minus P1 row 1 minus P2 row 2 minus P3. Good. What is the next step? Uh, H is equal to one. So when we look at h is equal to one, gamma one would be covariance y t of v one times covariance of y t comma y t plus v two covariance of y t comma y t minus one plus P3 covariance of y t. This is y t. I don't know why I put three because I'm pronouncing 
This time, since we get a lab plus one, we no longer have um, the same epsilon t. We would end up having epsilon t plus one. Epsilon t doesn't correlate with epsilon a plus one. So the last term would be zero. The gamma one would be three one. We know what that is. What is that? Not one yet. It's big. It's just gamma one. Right. When we divide by gamma one, it should become one. So the second term is gamma minus one, which is the same as gamma plus one because of symmetry. The third term is gamma minus two, which is the same as gamma plus two. Right? If I divide by sigma naught, excuse me, gamma naught, left hand side would become rho one, phi one, phi two, rho one, phi three, rho two. Good. Yes, no. So we don't need that. Um, all we need is um, this part. We don't need that sigma squared anymore because we're going forward and epsilon t doesn't correlate with epsilon t plus h. One more, uh, h is equal to two, we will have Gamma two, B one, covariance of Y T, comma Y T plus one. Yes, plus P two, covariance of Y T, comma Y T. Lastly, P three. Covariance of y t comma y t plus two. Minus one. Yes. Good. So gamma two. P1 gamma 1, P2 gamma 0, P3 gamma minus 1, which is the same as gamma 1. Correct. Now, if I divide by gamma 0 on both sides, what is gamma two divided by gamma two? Row two. Phi one, same on that side. Row one. Phi two. Gamma naught or gamma naught is one. And last three, I'd have phi three. Gamma one or the gamma naught. Row one. Good. So I've got the three equations. But you'll walk at once. Um, so I've got h is equal to zero right there, h is equal to one, h is equal to two. Would that be good enough for us to find v1, v2, and v3? We need h equals three. We need h is equal to three. Why? If they are equal. Three notations, three unknowns, we need three equations. So at h equals three, we would have v two, excuse me, v one, a variance of y t. We need v three. Yes, thank you. V one, a variance of y t, comma y t plus two. V two, a variance y t, comma y t plus one. 
phase three covariance of point T, comma point T. Good. Now, gamma three would be phi one, gamma two, phi two, gamma one, plus phi three, gamma naught, using the same logic. Correct. If I divide by gamma naught on both sides, I will simply get rho three equals phi one, rho two. P2 pro one plus X3. Good. So I can complete the matrix now for a day of three. Four. Yes. Right hand side, row one, row two, row three. Excuse me, left hand side. Um, first equation, um, if I pull out the coefficients v1, v2, and v3, what should go back? I need to get v1, so it has to be 1, row 1, row 2. Yes? Second row one, one row one. Last one row two, row one, one. one. And you can see the matrix is symmetric. And you should sort of see a pattern here. Um, if we had an AR2 model, those two will go away. Right? And if you look at the matrix that we have in there, that will match up to what we had one row one and row one. one. So now that we have the matrix, uh, we can simply, if we have a series in practice, we use the PAC to recognize the order. Use your worker to use uh, and use the autocorrelations to solve for fig one, fig two, and fig three. 